So while we talk about a lot of things in this channel, obviously we spend a lot of time talking about hyperbaric oxygen. Hyperbaric oxygen, obviously it's all about oxygen, oxygen being under pressure. But in addition to oxygen, there's all these other gases, these compounds, which are gases that surround us, whether they're environmental gases or gases inside of our body that are completely overlooked, yet critically important in our health and well-being. And these gases could be looked at as therapeutic agents that we could be using on our side to really move the needle and improve our health for the long term. So some of these gases are environmental gases like oxygen and nitrogen. You know, nitrogen, although most people assume it's inert, nitrogen, especially in a hyperbaric environment, may have a tremendous amount of therapeutic value. Oxygen, as you know, is the fuel for your mitochondria. It's literally the ingredient that our body needs to oxidize our fuel to produce ATP or cellular energy. We also use oxygen, like with ozone, as a oxidizing agent. And so it has oxidizing qualities, cell signaling qualities, and it has fuel qualities for energy production. Nitrogen, used especially in a hyperbaric environment, could create reactive nitrogen species. So much like reactive oxygen species, which is this free radical version of hyperbaric, which in some cases can cause damage, but in other cases, stimulate repair and regeneration of tissue, stimulate growth factors, stimulate hormone balance and neurotransmitter balance. Reactive oxygen species is literally a requirement for healing and recovery, as much as it is being blamed on so much of the chronic illness. Reactive nitrogen species, similarly, is a cell signaling molecule that would stimulate healing, growth, repair, and regeneration, of course, in the right amounts. What about other gases like carbon dioxide? Well, isn't that a waste gas? Well, sure, it's a waste gas. It's what our body is getting rid of as a result of energy production. Yet at the same time, could carbon dioxide actually be used therapeutically? Oxygen, as we know, is a vasoconstrictor. It literally limits blood vessel diameter. And there's a lot of great benefits. We use it in hyperbaric to our advantage from the standpoint of helping to control or reduce swelling and edema. Carbon dioxide is a vasodilator. So could we use carbon dioxide to improve vasodilation, to maybe help reduce some amount of blood pressure, maybe to improve red blood cell carrying efficiency? Because red blood cells, while we talk about it on this channel, are the cellular carrier for delivering oxygen to our cells. It's also the cellular carrier for getting rid of carbon dioxide. And so the more efficient a red blood cell can bind oxygen and deliver it to the cell, the more oxygen we can get to that working tissue. But the better and more efficient that we can bind carbon dioxide, the more efficient we can get that waste product out of the system. So we can use that as red blood cell activation. We could also use carbon dioxide therapeutically to help improve our carbon dioxide tolerance. The feeling of when we need to breathe, if you're holding your breath and you get that feeling that you need to breathe, it's not because your body is calling for more oxygen. It's because carbon dioxide is building up in your body and you're having this feeling that you need to release it. But there are a number of studies that show our improved carbon dioxide tolerance, our ability to have carbon dioxide build up in our system and be able to tolerate that calmly is one way that we can assess the health and the balance of our autonomic nervous system. So breathing three to 8% mixtures of carbon dioxide could absolutely be used therapeutically to enhance our health. Okay, we're gonna get right back to that information in a minute. I just wanted to pause and share a new resource that we just finished developing. If you're in practice or about to be in practice or you've been in practice, but you're trying to tighten things up and really dial in your hyperbaric practice, we put together a free ebook guide. It gives you some jumpstart tips as well as some checklists to go through to make sure that you have your policies, procedures all rolling in the right direction so that you can have a successful practice. If you're interested in that, click on the link in the description below and we'll make sure we send you to the page where you can learn more and get your free copy of our ebook. What about hydrogen? I mean, hydrogen's another environmental gas, but I didn't even include it. It's such a small fraction of a fraction of a percentage of environmental gases. However, hydrogen is used in our body all the time. Our body produces hydrogen as part of our acid-base balance. Our probiotic produce hydrogen as one of their waste products to help us stimulate redox balancing, the balancing of oxidation and reduction inside of our bodies. So many areas of cellular function, including ATP production, 
hinges on this redox balance, the balance of those two ends of the scale. And while oxygen is very therapeutic, of course, as we talked about earlier, it is oxidizing. And having a balance of reducing agents in our system helps to control and keep those systems in as close to equilibrium as they can. And hydrogen plays an amazing role in helping to make sure that we have enough reducing agents to balance those systems. As hydrogen is also playing this role of reducing agent, it literally is a selective antioxidant. A single hydrogen atom may shift our pH into a more acidic environment, whereas molecular hydrogen or two hydrogen atoms bound together actually can play a role in selective free radical scavenging and reducing the oxidative stress. And so hydrogen is a very interesting and very reactive molecule in our body, but can be used therapeutic in so many different ways. And lastly is nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a chemical that our body releases, similar to carbon dioxide, acts as a vasodilator. And in that vasodilator, it actually has effects on the vascular system, on the immune system, but specifically on the inflammatory side of the immune system, and also has effects on our neurological system. In fact, there are three different types of nitric oxide, NNOS, INOS, and ENOS. NNOS literally works on the nervous system, whereas INOS is working on the inflammatory system, on the immune system, and ENOS is the one working on our vascular system where the vasodilation occurs. A lot of the tools that we've talked about on this channel, hyperbaric, methylene blue, red light therapy, all of these therapies specifically affect the nitric oxide system. ENOS, we want more of. We want more vasodilation. It helps to regulate the autonomic nervous system. It could help to reduce blood pressure. It could help improve blood flow. NNOS also can help with nervous system balance and nervous system function, whereas INOS tends to excite the inflammatory process. And so we want to be able to control INOS, maybe even reduce INOS, while improving ENOS and NNOS function. Now, we're going to go into detail on all of these gases. By the time we finish this series and we go through nitric oxide, the three types, and how to influence and balance all three, hydrogen and all the ways that hydrogen affect our cellular biology, and what steps we can take to improve the hydrogen flow inside of our body, carbon dioxide, and not just looking at it as a waste product, but looking at it as a therapeutic agent that we can use to improve our health, and how can we get more carbon dioxide safely. And then, of course, oxygen and nitrogen, these environmental gases that we're surrounded by, you'll be an expert in understanding these compounds, understanding these molecules, what their benefits are, what their potential consequences are, what ways you can improve your exposure to these, and what you should expect as a result of getting exposed to these naturally existing compounds and using these therapeutic agents for improving your health for years to come. So please make sure you stay tuned for the rest of the series. The next video we're gonna cover is on oxygen and nitrogen, the environmental gases that we're already being exposed to. But when we increase our exposure, what effect do they have? How do we control that effect? How do we gain those benefits while also reducing any risks and consequences? How to use them in your existing health protocols and health programming. Please make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss the future videos in this series. And as always, thanks for your attention. We'll see you next time.